when I sat up, I, I was puking blood. I tried to stand up from where I was. So when, when I stood up, I felt like something has fallen into a hole. My baby has dropped into my pelvis. Allow me to introduce you to Psychex, a trusted partner in mental well-being, offering tailored services for individuals and corporates alike. Remember, you can support any of these women whose stories we continue to share by sponsoring their therapy sessions at Psychex. Psychex provides a range of therapeutic services from licensed therapists to life coaches, all conveniently accessible through a user-friendly web app www.psychex.io He assaulted me with that bat and you know when you are pregnant you are not supposed to lie on your back the, the, medically there is something that happens and at that moment I, I saw my baby due, due to the commotion the baby had woken up he was still cr a crawling baby so he, he had woken up and the baby I think because of noticing the commotion he was crawling where I was and he was throwing that baby away. And when he's throwing this baby away, he's hitting me with this bat from any, anywhere, and I'm lying like this, and his foot is here. And in, in that moment, I felt like I was going off. You know, the way you faint, and then after fainting, after some seconds, you usually come back. So I, I came, I, I got back to normal. And I found out that he has left me. So when, when I noticed that he has left me, I'm hearing him cursing. And at that moment, I saw something I saw when, when I was in the bed seat the first time I saw violence. He is breathing, <laughs> that, that, uh, some kind of fast breathing, and he's pacing all over. He, he is now in the other small room. He's not in this big room. He's pacing there and, and cursing. And, and insulting me. And, and when I, I, I was there now, I, I, I tried to sit and I'm telling God, please, I, I, I need an exit. The only way I can get out is through that door and he is in that kitchen pacing from there. When I sat up, I, I was puking blood. I, I, I was vomiting blood. I tried to stand up from where I was so when, when I stood up, I felt like something has fallen into a hole. You know, there is a, a situation whereby you, you, you can throw a, a heavy stone into a hole. Something, I felt like something has fell. So that, that is my baby. My baby has dropped into my pelvis. And, and from there, He's still pacing and, and making a lot of noise in the kitchen. And from there, I knew that was going to be a premature re labor. So I am trying to look. I'm, I'm not seeing any, there is water that is supposed to break. I don't see the water. But immediately, I felt that pressure. And I am no longer able to walk no more. I am walking with my legs apart. So I crawled from there because I was imagining if I don't do something, he's going to get back here. So I crawled out of the, of the bed. By the time I'm crawling, he, he grabbed the, the phone. When he grabbed this phone, my, my phone and his phone, he walked out. So I, I kept crawling. When he is walking out, that was to jeopardize that I do not call anybody. So when he's walking, they, I went to the door. And I tried to scream. So there is a lady who had heard me from upstairs. There is somewhere she, she is up. She can see me down. So she had noticed some noise I was making. Then she screamed because she saw me trying to scream. And I told her, ask him to return the phone. Because I'm not in a good situation. And he's taking away the phone. I can't call anybody. So the lady was there screaming. Then he went in a hurry. Hurriedly, he removed the SIM card and threw the phone back into the compound, and then he left.
that was to jeopardize that I do not call, I, don't, I do not get to call anybody. So the lady came, this lady came to help me. Now we were like, I don't have anybody's contact. I don't have any money. I'm puking blood. I can't walk properly. And then I have the other baby inside. So she told me, for me right now, I can't take you to the hospital because I don't have money as well. And may God bless that lady, whatever she is. She went to her house and brought her house help. She gave her house help 1,000 shillings for transport. I told her, I know where my mom is. Let me, if she carries the baby and some, the other baby now, because I can't carry the baby, and some clothes, she can take me there, then she'll come back. And that's how now the lady took me to my mom's place, and then she turned around and came back. So that's how I went to my mom, and then because of the situation, now she took me to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, the hospital, the scanning was showing a uh, baby head down. When they look at the scan, they are seeing the baby is head down. Head down, that means it, it will either play and, and get into another position if it's not time yet, or it will push itself out as labor. That's for delivery. So they told me, you go home and wait for the labor. When I went home, nobody noticed that that baby was captured here. My, my pelvic bones had opened and the baby had gotten in there and the bones had captured the baby here on the head such that the baby couldn't get itself out of there. And I stayed in that position. For, I, I was walking like that. I'm not seeing any water. I'm not feeling any labor for delivery for two weeks at my mother's place. Every time I was feeling, I, I would even sit on the seat and I feel something hard. On, on that seat, it was my baby's head for two weeks. Then he, he comes and tells my mother, now my husband comes and tells my mother that, you know, it is the work of the devil. It will not repeat itself again. You know, we had planned on how I am going to take her to the hospital next month for delivery. And now my mother, because of the situation, you see, you have a little one here. You, you are like that. You need hospital. She doesn't have money. She just lets him take me back. I remember one of my sisters who stays with my mother is the one who took the baby and the clothes again and took me back. I stayed like that again the whole of January. Remember, I went on December 24th. I stayed with mom two weeks. January came. I stayed the whole of January. I go to the hospital. They say, you go and wait for the labor. So when January was over, there was no labor because it was expected around there. I went to the hospital and they said, you go and add one week. Babies usually take longer. If one week goes and the baby has not come, you check in, we will do a surgery. We remove that baby. By the time I'm getting to the hospital for that surgery, he comes, he comes home and I tell him I didn't get the labor, so we are waiting for this date. You have to take me there. That day he wakes up and he goes to work and I ask him, now, where are you going? When are you going to take me to hospital? <laughs> Last time there was a friend, there was a girlfriend. This time there is no one. <laughs> so he goes to work and tells me, you stay there, I will come. And he goes to work, then he comes at around five. <laughs> at five, then he takes me. So when we get to the hospital at five, at St. Mary's, you know, those doctors who take shifts for the day, they are closing. So I got, a, a, my, my surgery was taken, the last one. For, they usually take in for to, tomorrow's surgeries, they take today. So mine came in the last one to happen tomorrow. So I was checked in and then they prepared me together with the others. At, and by the time all this was happening, I didn't know 
the, the only thing I knew was the baby's head down. It was, it was not known that the baby was stuck. So the following day I waited in line until my surgery came, the last one again at five. So when they took me to Tib, I had three doctors, one here and another one here, and then there was one at the back. And you know when nowadays they do these surgeries, they usually paralyze down. Then you are awake when it's happening. So I was seeing them uh, working so hard and struggling to remove something. And, and I was on that table, I, would, I was shaking. They were shaking me a lot and I was wondering, what are they doing? And when they were doing that, I, I felt like, Maybe there is something wrong with my baby. I, I was on that table asking myself, will I go home with that baby? After struggling all those struggles for those nine months, then this happens and I was like, there is something wrong with my baby. Then they, I'm trying to ask them because I'm awake. They are not telling me. I remember there are those clothes that they used to cover to, to block me from seeing, and I remember pulling them off, even though they, they cannot allow me to see. They explained to me that the baby was stuck in the bones. That is what they were doing, trying to, to pull it out. The baby's head was stuck. And so when they managed to get the baby out, I heard the baby cry. Yes, I was happy, but the, the baby came out with a problem, with, with a certain kind of a shape, because the bones had captured here, and then the head, it had like a press, a, a compression here, like a crack. And that, that baby's head was looking like number eight. You know, the way, the way it was captured here, the bones go in, then the head comes out like it, it was like number eight. It was okay for me, I got the baby, yes. But now what was that? What, what's with the baby's head? And, and the doctors were worried, like, they have to check, is the brain okay? If, if the brain was touched, you can imagine the brain damage. And those are the things that I am getting. Those are the kinds of reports that I am getting on a delivery table. They reassured me that the brain was okay. The brain was not touched. <laughs> The baby, baby's brain was fine, and then the physical shape, they said phys with physiotherapy the baby was going to recover. <laughs> and I thank one of the doctors who took me through that journey, because at the end of the day I got out of the hospital with that baby. <laughs> he is three years now. He's very clever. He's very clever. And the, the head is reshaping even though the shape is still showing. <laughs> it's a God's baby, you know, and God's, God says not yet. So I went home with my baby. When, when now I am being checked out from this hospital, he comes to take me home. It's a discharge. When I'm being discharged, uh, he, he gets me out of the hospital and the baby is crying. He's, he's like, the, the vehicle is outside. It, the vehicle is waiting. I don't have to waste. He's quarreling on the corridors and my baby is crying. I remember asking him, why are you taking me out of hospital wards with a crying baby, a crying newborn baby? W what is the hurry? And he, he was shouting, bitch, on corridors of the hospital. People were even looking at him, bitch, ni yamazie, nita kutandika saizi. Like, bitch, shut up. I am going to beat you up. Keep quiet. You are wasting my time. That is the father of the kid who came to pick me out of the hospital. He is insulting me for what? And I was there thinking, why am I with someone? What's the difference? 
wouldn't it have been better if I walked out of that ward alone? You, you walk yourself alone with that baby other than have somebody who is making that situation awful, yet it is supposed to be a celebratory moment, even though the baby was somewhere, now the baby is somewhere. Why don't you appreciate small things, small things like in life, this baby is okay. And in the hospital ward, people would come to visit on the bed there and he's asking, when he saw his baby, he, that num the head was looking like number eight. The baby can't lie like this. It either lies like this or like this because the head came out like a, uh, it, it was like a pyramid. And he's, he didn't like what he saw. People are visiting. He goes and asks them what, what what is wrong with this baby. Another one is visiting. He's asking, see the baby, what is wrong? And for me, I was very uncomfortable. He does not even talk to me. I'm the one who was with the doctor. So why are you asking the, the visitors of the woman next bed? What do they know? What do you want them to tell you? And he's that kind of a person. He's now agitated that the baby looks like that. Why don't you ask me? So this is someone who from the word go does not confide does not confide me in me. He is someone who does not approach me. So everything I have had with him for these eleven years, there is no approach. He he doesn't face me. He doesn't position me. He, he doesn't give me that place that I am the the one to discuss these things with. And I was waiting for us to get home so that I can call him in privacy and explain to him what happened to that baby because he got out of that hospital without an explanation of what went on or how did it happen that the baby is like that. Nothing. He does not even go to those doctors and ask. So we get home. Uh, I remember moms were there, his mom, my mom, people who, their sisters, siblings, his brothers, whoever came, they took us home. Uh, you know, he left with me and he was very agitated. So the others were coming after us to come and find us at home. They celebrated the baby, even though the situation was a bit tense. They left. And when they left, I remember he comes home at nine because I didn't have a house help or anybody staying with me. His mother calls him and says, the patient is ready to sleep. I am leaving because the mother stays around. Where are you? And then he comes home at nine, the mother leaves. So when the mother leaves, I remember I was on a bed and I have a little baby here, the helpless one. Then I have the newborn here a sick baby and I am having a wound, a surgery wound. Before I sleep, I told, he, he sat, I, I am on a bed and then there is a sofa there. He sat on that sofa and he was looking at me. So I told him, by the way, babe, I wanted to talk to you about the baby. And when I started that conversation, he was looking at me. So I told him, um, I didn't like the way you were asking people about the baby's head. What happened is this and this. And remember the day we had a commotion here, you were beating me with that baseball bat. That is the day I felt like that baby moved in into my bones. So when I, I was explaining that to him, he was just there looking at me. And then he said, so you want to blame me? <laughs> and I remember telling him, no, I am not blaming you. I'm just trying to explain to you what happened with the baby's head. And the doctor said the baby will be okay. We just leave him alone. We'll be going for clinics for physiotherapy. And then I slept. I, I just sat there. We didn't, he didn't say anything else. And then I, I, the sleep carried me away. So when I fell asleep, it was around nine when he arrived. I remember this father of my kids, when I, I fell asleep, uh, you, you, a normal human being, you usually sleep, then maybe in the middle of the night there is turning, or you get out of sleep. So when I got out of sleep, there was light in the room, so the bulb is still on. Then I look from the sofa where I left him. Mind you, 
he was still seated the same same position and i look on the wall it's 3 a.m in the morning so and he's like this the eyes he's looking at me straight 3 a.m and i'm like hey babe now, before I say that, I was wondering, why, why would someone sit from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. in the night on a sofa looking at me? He's looking. I was expecting to find him. You know, when you sit, you sit there, at least I will find you, you like this. Maybe you are snoring, you fell asleep, or you stretched yourself for the, over that seat and you slept there. He's like this at 3 a.m. and I'm worried and I'm like, hey babe, you're not sleeping today. You know what I had? I had, bitch, I am going to take a rope and hang you. And, and he says it loudly at night, in the middle of the night, I cannot even run away, I cannot even scream. How do you say that? I, I, I will take a rope and hang you. And he is saying it after sitting on the same position I left him from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. in the morning. How did I wrong him that he comes and says those kinds of things when I needed at least a, even a very little consolation? <laughs> that is what he chooses to say. You know, I was asking him, are you threatening me with death? And he said, no, it's not a threat. It's, it's only that I don't have a rope here. <laughs> and then in, in, in between there, I, I fell asleep again. So around six, I hear someone tapping on me. And he's like, babe, babe, wake up. Hey, how are you? Are you okay? What's paining? And now I get confused again. Now I'm like with two people. Who is he exactly? He, he said that he will hang me at night. In the morning, he is here with a tray of fruits. I am with hot, cold, hot, cold, cold, hot. Who is he? <laughs> Which one is he? I take these fruits and then he prepares food and does everything else, gives me medicine and then he leaves. He calls the mother. When the mother comes, then he leaves for work. So when the mother arrived, I was so disturbed that he said what he said at night. I called the mother and told her, ah, we need to talk. You know, we have never discussed your son. And today, at night, he, when you bro people brought me home yesterday, at night he said something and I am not comfortable with it. Please call him back here, let him explain why, why I say that, what is wrong, what is the problem. <laughs> And the mother says, no, we cannot uh, provoke him in this state. You know, you are still sick and we have a baby with a problem. When you are okay, we will talk to him. And I was like, he said, what? And we are going to wait until we are okay and do what? No. So for me, she didn't help me much. She dismissed that story. So I immediately went outside because I didn't have a phone. He has the phone. So I went to a neighbor, looked for a phone and dialed my mother. I told her, yesterday you people brought me home when you left this and this happened at night. And I am not comfortable. So come and pick me. So my mom finds some assistance and then she comes. And the way it is for her, by herself, she can't come and get me. She has to send someone. So she came with her sister again. So the sister is the one who was sent to get to remove me from there. So my mother, they say culturally, she's not supposed to. And that's how I was removed with my babies. And before they did that, they met the mother there and they spoke with the mom. You know, it's not good to take someone just like that. Where is he? Can we talk? 
and then the mom calls the son and he doesn't come he doesn't respond he doesn't show up so what option did they have they took me with the babies and now that's how i went home to my mother with a sick baby and my helpless baby so that's why now i i was taken care of i healed after healing uh some like a month or two there was a break out of corona i had just gotten a baby in february then there was corona in march so it was that period of corona that i had this little baby this this helpless baby and i have another one who is having an issue so at at least at at my mother's house i was taken care of because because there is one of my sisters who is abroad she came through for me very well especially with medical and and like treating the baby physiotherapy was so expensive and this man did not do anything about it so i thank god for my sister she took care of me and those babies until i recovered now when i was in this house there is another sister of mine who stays with my mother um it happened that i was in my i was in one room i was given a room so i used to stay in that room with the babies because i can't move one is helpless and i can't move i'm sick and then i have another one so i i can only sit in one place and then they help me to handle them so this one has already started walking around so when the auntie is in the house in the other room the auntie is my sister now this baby gets out when he wakes up she gives him porridge and then she maybe handles him when i am in the room handling the other one maybe i'm washing the baby and this day i remember my baby woke up the way he used to wake up early went to the auntie the auntie was there gave him the porridge as usual i was in the room washing this little one and i had my baby i had my my sister come back from somewhere come back to the house and she's like telling the baby get out get out I want to cook get out this is fire get out so i had her warning the baby like that then i had my baby cry just once and then my baby kept quiet but now because i'm in the other room with the other baby say, ah that's the auntie so when the baby she she used to make lunch when she cooks food she puts my food somewhere cuz i will wake up slowly the others feed then me i'll go later and feed so she puts my food aside i come and feed and feed the baby so when i'm coming out i find my baby with a very big burn mark here a burn mark on the cheek i have been with this baby until 10 in the morning that is when the baby came to you the next thing this baby is not even going outside yet it's an indoor baby the next thing you stepped out then you come back you are telling my baby to get out you want to cook and now my baby has a very big mark, burn mark on the cheek i'm trying to ask her that and she's like shut up you 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 usually come here to disturb people with those kids of yours you're giving birth like a, I, I, she started raining insults on me I am proud I am disturbing people I cannot give birth and stay in my marriage he said so many things I usually come into that house to pretend how I am learned I call other people illiterates This conversation is about my baby having a burn mark on the cheek How where does the conversation about illiteracy and who is not learned and who is proud and I am coming here and she rained insults and she rained insults and she was shouting and she was saying it in Kiswahili how hicho kitoto chako kinasumbua kimecheza na sufuria kikachomeka so my baby played with a cooking pot he burnt his cheek around mark and he did not burn his hands or anywhere else on the parts of the body how how does a baby play with a cooking pot and burn the cheek I am a chemist I do I did chemistry in in chemistry when you burn you get a, a metal burn you you get a straight like it's it's straight in line it is not in circle So what did she do with the baby's cheek And the way she was insulting me 
the, the, the things she's saying to me, the insults, I did not even have to ask anything further. She banned that child so that the child can get away to stop disturbing her. It came on a Friday, I decided it was on a Thursday. On Friday, I waited. People were not around. Anybody who comes to that house as a relative, as a sibling, as the owner, the mom, everybody, I called them on Sunday because they are home. I told them I came here because I have problems and my babies are staying here. Now I just wanted to address them. If the baby is disturbing you in any way, because I cannot move, I had surgery and I have a little one, you pick the baby, bring it back into the room. So I had to be confined like that until I heal. So by the time I'm calling them on Sunday, she is the one who is absent. She comes back late and people are waiting. When she arrives, I'm like, hey, my sister, I wanted to talk to you people about my baby who burnt the cheek here on Friday. I did not finish that statement. My sister started insulting me again. Shut up. You are accusing me of burning your child. Why are you accusing me of burning that this stubborn child? By the way, you should get out of this house and go. You came here to disturb us. And she fell on me. I was seated on a sofa holding the little one. And she started beating me up. And my sister beat me up. Remember, I am having a little baby. I'm sitting and she falls on me and starts hitting and, and she's cursing and insulting me and saying things like, I, I, am, I am proud, I, I am bringing pride in there to disturb people. I am giving, I am I'm showing off children. She has a son who is now a big boy, around 14 years. She has raised that son in that my mother's house for 12 years. She left the, the marriage, she came with a son, she raised that baby in that house for 12 years. Why have I come with my babies today and she feels like I am a threat? And for me, I did not take that well. The son moves in between because the mother is beating the other, the auntie. It is her son who gets in between to separate to stop her from what she's doing. And I was embarrassed. What kind of motherhood is this? For me, I wouldn't even want my son to see me in that kind of a position. So some people are full of this hooliganism. After my child has burnt a cheek in a controversial situation, you were the one who was with the kid. Why don't you want to be asked? The guilt, the way she was even fighting me, this is someone who has been looking for a way to throw a punch at me for years. Because the things she's saying are not even related to what happened to the baby. If this is where my mother is and I'm running to there for solace, what if it was her door that I went to knock for help? And I don't know where I have been because I am I'm being I'm shocked. I'm 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 meeting hooliganism. I saw it from my father and I thought maybe it was less painful because it was not me directly. <laughs> I saw it with my guardian. I see it with my husband. I see it with my sibling. <laughs> so it was brushed off like that and my sister, to, sol to resolve that, she decides to move me from that house so that we don't stay together with my sister and she puts me somewhere in a rental. So from mother's, my mother's place, she rented for me a, a, a bed sitter in an apartment. So I moved there with my babies. And that's where now I raised the boys in indoors until I healed and I started doing things with these babies. I started going to the market. You know, I was near my mom so that she can help me when I want to leave them, but I never even left them with my mother because of the discomfort of who I met in the house. And I think God was revealing that to me so that I may understand whenever you leave those children behind thinking that there is somebody you left me with, Maybe God was revealing to me that that is the kind of a person you will be thinking you live you leaving the kids with. <laughs> and I appreciate it because I was able to strengthen up. I, I handled those children so marvelously. 
I could even go to the market with one on the back, one on the hand and pick tomatoes and pick, you know, you buy cabbages and carry luggage. And it was that easy. I never left them with my mother when there was no reason. Unless there was a valid reason. And now this man, by the time this healing is taking place, he is now on phone. And now I am able to chat the phone, I am able to pick calls, and I I get back in there and I'm being told how, you know, I love you. You know, those children, why are you taking those children away from their father? Bring those children back. But my mom was talking to me, and she used to warn me, you know, I am a, an example. Let me tell you, you don't go and, you don't leave and return leave and return, leave and return. I did that for years and I still left with six children. For me, I was hell-bent that I want these children to have a father. I would like these children to belong. See the life, the kind of life I, I grew up in. Whatever my mother did not do, I will do it so that this man can be good to us. I'm going to do it so that this man can be a good father. That is what is ringing in my mind. I'm not imagining uh, I am with an abuser. I'm not imagining he is a narcissist. As I came to discover lately that they do not change, they are just tactical in luring you with lies and, and empty promises and disguise. So I get into that and I start chatting this man behind my sister's back. Remember, she had warned me, I am doing this because these children do not have a father, because these children, because you do not have a husband. The, the little, the firstborn now gets to one year. He tells me, come for a birthday. He sends a Uber. The Uber comes, I get in with the babies. I lock the bed seat. I don't tell anybody I've gone anywhere. And I leave. So my mom is still checking around because they usually check around. Then she finds the door locked. There's nobody. I say, no, I'm in town. I'm coming back. She's there at six. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in the bus with the babies. Where are you? I am with the father of the kids. I, I left. I am with the father of the He took me somewhere for a birthday. A very big hotel, five-star hotel, you know. Wow. Five-star? Can you imagine five star hotel, my baby's birthday? This man loves me. What are people telling me? People are telling me he's a bad guy and it's the work of the devil. In fact, I started imagining how people are talking ill of him. There are people who do not want him to prosper. There are people who don't like good things for him. Maybe his people, his family members hate him. <laughs> Maybe he's, they, are, they, are, they are doing things because they, do, they don't want him to get married to me. Those are the things I am telling myself so that I can, you know, I can explain what he's doing and what happened. <laughs> My baby's head, the, the, the blood, I was puking blood after being assaulted with a baseball. But five, five star birthday party is, is watering that down, is soothing the pain. And after birthday, I didn't return. He corners me to going, you know, you, you are already with me here. Why don't we go to the house? We finish the birthday. The baby birthday is still on and we go to the house, his house, where I was assaulted with the, ba with the baseball at the bell sitter. Now we go there. That day when we arrive, he rushes into the house when he was opening, into the room. And for me, I'm here with the kids trying to remove shoes, what, what. When he was rushing in there, he was trying to hide things. So when we get in, he, he then, I think he was making sure there's nothing there. Remember, it's that one big room and, and the small one. So I'm still here removing shoes and what, what. He has already rushed and I noticed that rush. So for me... Obviously, I understood that he is trying to make the place tidy or remove something that is controversial. And when he now leaves to go and get us food again at around 8 in the night, 
he gets out now i start looking at what is it that he was removing and i find my dirty clothes basket i lift it and i find a dress under the a dress that is not mine under that basket so he he was rushing to remove that dress so he happened to put it under the basket but it, I, when i move in the room i can see it's showing something shiny it was a, a glitter a very glitter dress from top to down so i saw it and i pulled it and it's a lady's dress and it's not mine but i keep quiet anyway i have not been here i kept quiet i removed it from under the basket i threw it somewhere on the cupboards <sighs> and he returns and i look around because now i want the the to clean the place my babies can't sleep on that bed i start looking for my bed sheets where i usually keep them i remove the bed i find there are papers for cd's the condoms you, you know when you use their papers all over so i am trying to clean that so that i can put fresh bed sheets the, then these bed sheets that i'm removing there is women's makeup all over there is i don't know when you lie on a, on a bed sheet with these powders obviously they will get lipsticks and it's not mine so obviously there has been somebody here or people here you know i still held on to the fact that he loves me and the kids see they came but i'm still i'm the, i'm here with the children oh my god i i made the bed i put on the bed sheets for my children we slept anyway but very uncomfortably because i was disturbed about it i was so pissed off to notice that this dress that was left in that house there is one dress so for me when i'm having these deliveries i used to mark my baby's deliveries with dresses I say I am checking into the hospital with this dress for so and so's delivery. That dress is going to be monumental somewhere for life. I am going to the doctor. I will be in the doctor's office wearing this dress. When I leave the hospital with the baby, I will be wearing this dress. So there is a dress for my baby's delivery that that is missing. So um, the red red and white dress So this dress was left here because she wore my dress. How 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 can you demean me that much? You mean you despise me that much? You you give another woman my dress? Yeah. He he can dress another woman with my dress and that's nothing. and 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 i i followed up that that night we we fought anyway we didn't even sleep in good terms because of that situation obviously i can't take it it's painful i'm trying to keep quiet but i can't so by the time i'm waking up in the morning i'm so pissed off me you know i'm already done with this relationship and i left when i went back we started he still follows me up on phone apologizing oh i'm sorry you know i already chose you this statement of choice used to carry me away you know he's using it to convince me that i'm the one these others are by the way and he explains you know that dress you know it was i don't know for who he starts telling me some lies and my dress is missing then i decided there was a bracelet that i was awarded by one of my brothers as a souvenir he had bought me that bracelet some african bracelet i'm looking in my drawers and i'm not seeing it so that one now hurt me you cannot just bring people here start picking my things and giving them there is a brother i lost and i have nothing else to hold on to except that bracelet and it's gone i told him you have to get me my bracelet no matter what and then we started making a deal if you want me to come back get me the bracelet and he went and got the bracelet back <laughs> so obviously there was someone but when i got my bracelet i didn't get back and remember my family now they don't even know i am seeing him i'm i'm leaving my place to rongai i'm sleeping over every friday he used to invite me friday saturday sunday i live on monday so maybe they were just filling the gaps but they won't 
ask me or something like that. But mom used to tell me, please don't go back there before that man comes back, comes here to explain himself at least. Don't take yourself back. That is what my mom was telling me. And so he stays on and off trying to soothe me. What I did good, I didn't allow him to come to the bed sitter where I was. That one I refused completely because it was my sister's, you know, energy. I can't betray that. So I, I, I didn't allow him to come. What I told him, if you want to come, just come to my mother's house. And so he tried to corner me like, please come back. Why do we have to go all the way? And I stood by my mother's word. At least I thought she would help me. Don't go back if he doesn't come back. So one day I get a call, December 15th, 2020. And he says, uh, which, which bus do I take? Then he comes to my mother's house alone. And they, he's, he comes and speaks to my mom there, what, what. And then after speaking, my mom says, no, you know what to do. I'm not even supposed to be speaking with you. Then he goes and gets people. He organizes himself and then they pick a date. They come back again in January. And then there is that, you know, she you, she was, and when she was, he was sitting there, he, he's telling these people, my people now, you see, your daughter is very mouthy. Your daughter is insulting me. And I noticed he, he came at a sitting with elders to convince them how their daughter, how bad their daughter is. He is seated there with them, and he is like, this is your daughter, this is your daughter, really? And there is this friend that he has chosen to bring him. He is pulling him outside, outside moments, I think, to, to advise him on something. Then they come back, really? And I saw the controversy that was surrounding this marriage I was so happy about this marriage that I was so into, there was a lot of controversy, a lot of uncertainty because even when someone, when, when you leave a husband and the people are coming to get you back, they don't come once, twice, thrice. Most cases, they usually come and you are gone. They don't even come and then you are left there, you will come another day. So there was all that kind of commotion. So this is someone, I am with someone who has no depth. Something is very, very wrong, including these people who are bringing him to pick a wife and children. Because if I am his wife, um, they, how did I get into his house as a wife? Then when they are coming to pick me, how do they pick me back? What, what, what exactly are they coming to pick back? Because as it turns out, I realized that I am not married. This guy never married me. I, am, I have been in, a, in an assumed marriage. Assumed marriage, come we stay, is not a marriage. And these people are there. Anytime I, I leave, they come and pick me. What, what do they usually discuss? They usually sit down and discuss what? That they are going to pick who, what, as who? once, twice, thrice. So you see, for me, I, I noticed some kind of very big disconnect because you cannot be walking into somebody's home once, twice, thrice, you're going to pick what? Mother and kids, wife. H how do you pick a wife? So you see, he is surrounded. I noticed that this man is surrounded with people who don't even make that impact in his life that you do not walk into somebody's home to go and pick a come we stay once, twice, thrice. <laughs> and that has been my situation. So that is how valueless I am. Even to these people whom you drag when you, you've made your mistakes, they follow you. Are they not ashamed? or following you once, twice, thrice, where do they usually follow you to? <laughs>